What's up, Blender Savages? Long time no see, or long time no chat. You guys haven't seen me yet. Maybe one of these days I'll uh, pop up over here with the webcam. But uh, today, we're going to go over shape keys. We're going to use shape keys here to animate the little monkey here, Suzanne, the Blender monkey. And uh, make Suzanne here smile, raise eyebrows up and down. And you, you can do all kinds of stuff with shape keys. You can change mesh and uh, animate the mesh in editing mode. And editing mode. Isn't that cool? All right, so I'm going to be uh, following this handout here that I made for my students at my school. And uh, if you're not one of my students, uh, you can buy one of these on Amazon for three bucks from Kindle. If you are my student, you're going to get it for free. So uh, sign up for one of my classes at Santiago Canyon College in uh, Orange, California. And uh, you get this for free. But uh, I know you get it free. It's a Kindle Unlimited account. You get it for free. But if not, you can get a digital version here. Read it. Um, and a Kindle for $2.99 or whatever mobile device or website you wish to use. But uh, let's get started. All right. So first of all, as you can see here, we can create these awesome expressions. There we go. And uh, we're going to do that right over here in Blender. So I'm going to go back over here. We'll start with the nice fresh canvas. So the default QB, you can even uh, shape keys this right here. Uh, let's see. Let's see you want to animate the top of it here. Tab key. And I want to animate this. Uh, to go in more narrow. If I do this in object mode, I can't really do much. In edit mode, I can do this, but I can't keyframe those changes I just made. I can't do that. I can hit I key here, and nothing happens. It gives me an inset. Actually, something does happen. It gives me an inset, which is uh, to create another face here that I can extrude from. I can do stuff like that, but it's not really keyframing it. So uh, Control Z undo, Tab key, and let's animate that change there. So I'm going to go over here to the Properties panel. I'm going to click on the uh, wrench right here. Sorry, not the wrench, uh, right here. Click on this triangle right here. Green triangle pointing down. Uh, that's the symbol there for object data properties for mesh, for mesh object data. If I click on the camera, it's a green camera. Click on the sun here on the lamp, sorry, the point lamp. It's a, uh, it's a little light bulb. So I'm going over here to cube and shape keys here to set the plus sign. Boom, this first one here is just for your default stage, which is this, your default resting pose. And then the second one here is for the actual shape key, the actual movement. And uh, I'm going to go here to, to edit mode now, tab key, select these here up top and scale them inward. As for scale, there it is. Tab key back to object mode, and boom, it went back to normal, you see? So, because I had uh, the shape key here, the first, the first shape key here selected, I went over edit mode, I did some editing, and it actually recorded that. Down here in value, uh, right now the resting position here is zero. If I increase it to one, it'll be 100% deformation. So let me increase that up. There it is. See, and I can bring it up and down. You can just hold down the left mouse button and drag there to change the uh, the extreme the extreme of it. There it is, at most extreme pose, and halfway there at 0.5. You can also just click in there, 0.5 enter. That's halfway there and down to zero. I can keyframe that. Uh, to do that, a couple ways. You can right click right here, select insert keyframe, and where's that? There it is, insert keyframe. Uh, another way, undo. I can click on the little dot right here. So it gives me a diamond. Undo and the other method, just hover your mouse in there without clicking on it. Hit the I key on your keyboard for I for insert, and there we go. And all three methods, hopefully, you notice that I added a diamond right here at frame one where I wanted to start out with the animation. And I'm going to go over here to frame 40. And at frame 40, I'm going to bring it down to bring it up to one and keyframe that as well. Just click there or I key, whatever you want to go with. Back to frame one or zero, play button, and there it is. And maybe I want to. Animate it back up, open it up, back to zero. I key this time, there it is. Frame one, play button, close, and then open. It's that easy. All right, so let's animate the monkey head here. I'm gonna delete that cube. Delete, there it goes. And I'm gonna bring in the monkey head here, Shift A, mesh, and right there, monkey. Bam, all right, let me zoom in. I got the monkey head right there. Let me go over here to my handout, see what's next. All right, so right away, it looks like I'm gonna start making my shape keys here. All right. So over here to the uh, object data properties for the monkey head there. And make sure it's shape keys. Watch out for vertex group. See, they look exactly the same. Just the label here is a little bit different. So make sure you hit the plus sign on this one right here. Boom, basis. That's for the resting position here. And the industry in 3D animation, this is known as morph target animation. So if you're doing research on shape keys, another word you can use is morph target uh, animation or uh, Shape interpolation. All right, so that's for the resting pose there. Uh, this one actually doesn't get animated. So you can see here there's no value there. Plus sign again. 
and there it is. So um, this one's the one that's going to be doing the actual animating. This is my shape key. You can have shape keys for all kinds of different uh, transformations. So we're going to have some for the eyebrow and for the mouth. Uh, you can even add some for the ear, the nose, maybe the head, whatever. All right, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to tab key here. And it looks like I'm going to select the, this part of here on the, on, the, uh, on the smile here and try to get it a smile on the mouth here. This doesn't look smiling. Sort of looks like it's smiling. Hey, one for front view right there. See it from the front. Tab key for edit mode. Monkey head selected. I'm in, I'm in shape key one right here. Let me zoom in. I'm going to hold on shift and the little mouse button so I can pull this up. There it is. And I'm going to drag select these right here. There's actually, there's a small vertex in there too. You wanna, you're going to want to get that one. Back one back to front view by hitting one on the number pad. Make sure number lock is on. And I'm going to drag select here by holding down the left mouse button and dragging across right there. There it is. I got those. I got those there selected. I want to make a smile. Hit G for grab. I can obviously pull it up, but as you can see here, it um it only grabs these. It's not pulling the other mesh, and it's only doing one side, so it's not mirrored. So to make this easier for us, we don't have to do this side and then go the other side and try to make it mirror. Hit the N key on your keyboard in for Nancy, and you get the sidebar menu right here. And then go over here to Tool, the Tool tab, and then click on Options right here. There it is, and we're going to activate the X mirror X right here, mirror, click on X, and it's apology mirror. And so now, anything I do on one side of the X axis, here's the X axis, the red line, anything I do on this half or that half, it'll mirror on the other side. Watch this. G for grab, bam. And this works for anything you're doing in, edit, in editing mode. Let me get rid of the toolbar. This works for um, any mesh object you can take to edit mode. That's, that'll work for you there. All right, so now I don't need that anymore. It's active. I just got to tuck this away. End key. There we go. And then also when I pull this here, G for gram, kind of get this Joker smile. If you want that, that's cool. But now it looks kind of weird seeing what happens there. See that mesh went through that other mesh there. So I'm going to activate something called a proportional editing tool. So when I pull this mesh, these vertices here, it will not only pull these uh, edges next to it, but it'll also pull some of the other vertices that are around it. That tool is right up here. Let's see that bullseye icon. I click on it, and it turns blue. So now it's active. G for grab. And see, I got this circle here. That's like the area of influence. And now even uh, now uh, a lot more of my mesh here is being moved around. See, and you can see the mirroring there. Another way to turn that on is by hitting O on your keyboard. O for um, Octavius, Doctor Octopus. There, you can turn. You can tap it, and it just turns off and on by hitting the O key there. All right, but I want it on right now. All right, so I'm going to G for grab. I haven't clicked yet. See the circle? It looks really big, right? So uh, it's this is just too much of a smile for me. So you can actually spin the wheel on your mouse to make it smaller and change the area of influence of the proportional editing tool. If you don't have a mouse, you can use page up or page down on your keyboard to change the size of it. It makes it a little bit smaller, right about there. And as big as the smiles you want to make, maybe not too much. You want to look somewhat natural. Obviously, the monkey head here, it's not realistic. You know, it's cartoony. So even uh, cartoon things look kind of natural and seem to follow some laws of physics. Let's see. Eh, I guess that's cool right there. It's not all distorted or destroyed. All right. Make these tools here visible. All right. Here we go. Uh, so that's that timeline. Let me go uh, put that at one here. I don't know if I got in there somehow. All right. So tab key was back to normal, but in edit mode, it got changed there. All right, so I'm going to go here, it says key one, and I'm going to call it smile. I'm going to just double click in there and call it smile. Right here, this area here is called your list view. Now, a lot of these windows here are going to have a list view available there. And you have buttons here so you can navigate through them. So you can go up and down and select the different ones and add additional ones, subtract them. And then you got your uh, specials button here, and there's other uh, organizational tools in there as well. All right, call it smile. There we go. Made the smile there. Put a smile on your face. Wait, is that how the quote goes? I don't know. Put it down in the comments, the quote for the uh, Dark Knight, Joker, Joker character. I already messed it up. All right, so I'm going to test out the value of it here. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and drag over. Yep, that works. If that's not working, uh, go ahead and start over. <laughs> Better start over right now than later, later uh, deep in the project. All right, so I'm going to create a vertex group. So notice earlier when I was deforming the mouth, it also deformed the eyes, right? So the eyes are actually a separate object. Um, not necessarily a separate object. They're a, a separate group from the uh, rest of the head here. Uh, they're called vertex groups or linked vertices. I think right now they're just linked vertices. Let me hit the tab key for edit mode. 
uh, you can see this face right here. It's part of the eye, and it goes through the mesh right there. See, I just clicked it there. You can see it's sticking out the side, this part here too. Oops. And so I'm going to try to isolate it so that um, the when I do the portion editing tool, it doesn't affect the eyes. It'll still affect us somewhat, but we're going to try not to. Right, it's going to help us pre to prevent uh, any of the uh, transformations here done with the portion editing tool, uh, not to get it, not to also affect the eye. So what I'm going to do is click on a vertex down here somewhere on the nose, and then while my mouse is still in that same area, hit the L key, L for A for link, L for link, L key, L for link. And there it goes. I selected everything except for the eyes. And then over here where it says vertex group, I can create a group just for those vertices. I'm at the plus sign here. And there it is. You can just leave it as group or monkey head or whatever, or not the eyes. And then you got to click assign. It's important you hit assign or else it's not going to actually assign anything to this group. So I hit assign there. And now vertex group there. So um, I isolated the eyes from it. And then down here, vertex group, I can select that group there. Here and down here, clicking here for the uh, shape key, select group. All right, so now it should only affect uh, that group there, but it's not 100%, but it'll help us out. Tab key, there we go. All right, I'm going to create another shape key here, and we're going to do one for the brows going up. So, all right, so I'm in object mode. So you can only add other shape keys in object mode. So if I go to edit mode, see they get grayed out. I can't add any more shape keys. Tab key. And let me scroll through here. I can actually expand this up. And I'm hit the plus sign right here. Create a new group. There it is. And I'm gonna call this one Browse Up. Browse Up, like that. Uh, maybe an underscore. If this is gonna go in a video game or something, you might wanna use an underscore so not to uh, corrupt their code. All right, so I don't have any conflicts uh, with whatever uh, programming language that other app software is using. All right, so Browse Up there. Browse Up shape key is selected. Take this to edit mode. Tab key, here we go. And I'm gonna select the ridge here of the brow. So I'm gonna go here to face selection. And remember, you only have to select one side. Click here, and then you can hold on shift and click your way around. Or if you click here, hold on control and click up here. It'll select everything in between. There it goes. Hold on control and click on this one here, and it selects everything in between. If you're thinking, why didn't you just click that one and that one? It's gonna follow the path of least resistance. So if I did this one and then control click here, it's going to select some other ones in here. Watch this. Click that one. Control, click. Yeah, see, we don't want that. So I'm going to redirect it over here and then direct it down over there. Click this one. Control, click. Control, click. There it is. All right, so I got that brow selected. I still have the mirror uh, topology tool activated. Once it's active, it stays active until you turn it off. Same thing with portion editing. That's still on there. And I'm just going to move the brows up. G for gram. We're going up. You can go off to the side a little bit. See, it's kind of distorted too much. So I'm at Z, try to snap it here a little bit better. And notice the eyes are mainly seen in, 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 in place. It's going to say in space. See, if I make the circle bigger, though, it's going to start messing them up a bit. See, there it is. But overall, it seems to do a better job about it. So let me bring up the eyebrows a little bit. Enough that they're noticeable that they went up. Maybe up to that, to that line right there, that edge, GZ, right there. All right, tab key. Hey. There it is, open front view, so browse up. There it is. Cool, so that's an amino. Let me test that out, bring the value up. And that works, that easy, all right? And we're just gonna keep creating shape keys for other expressions. If you wanna venture out and try other uh, other shape keys, we can do that as well. Uh, create shape keys for other uh, facial expressions. All right, so I'm gonna create one for the uh, browse down. So browse going down, I'll make one for that. All right, so plus on here, new shape key. Make sure it's an object mode. Double click key three there. Brow. Damn. All right. There it is. And a tab key. And it should still be selected there. Even though I have another shape key, that was the last thing that was selected. And uh, everything goes back to the default pose because the basis, thankfully, there for, for basis. Thanks to basis. So now I'm going to pull these down. GZ. Like that. Three for right view. You can even rotate them a bit. So you are for rotate, you can try something like that, make it a little bit more obvious that they're uh, going down. Tab key, all right, browse down there. And there it is, look a little bit more sad. If you want, you can actually um, change the circle here more and you kind of make the eyes a little droopy too. That might add more to the effect there. Because in cartoons, even the eyes should change shapes, right? Oh, 
sad monkey. There we go. All right. Let's see here. Vertex group. Oh, yeah. I, f I forgot I signed a vertex group to that. So, vertex group there. So, that's maybe why I uh, pulled in some of the eye, right? Vertex group there. All right. So, another one. Plus sign here. And what's the next one that we're making here? What's the next expression here on the handout? And gasp. Gas mouth. Oh, okay. Surprise look. So, I'm going to double click here. Key four. And gasp. You can just call it gasp. All right. Make it easier. And vertex group right here. We'll only affect the, the main mesh there. Tab key. All right. And this one's for the mouth here. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to get out of uh, face selection because I'm trying to select just these vertices, not all these faces here. I'm trying to select just these uh, vertices right there. So vertex selection up here, top left corner. Drag select right there. And then GZ, we're going up. Maybe make this smaller. I like a surprise look. Oh, you know what? It'll look better if I get that one too. There we go. GZ. Let's see, tab key, there it is, test this out, value up, there it is, did it go inward a bit, because we can even pull it out some, GY, there it is, go for front view, and bam, 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 alright, and any more expressions, I think that might be it, and it goes up, and cool, that's it, so now we're going to keyframe the, uh, the animations here. All right, so there's my monkey head here. So I want it starting now here at this resting pose. So to do that, I'm actually going to have to keyframe all of these here and uh, make sure they all have group in there. Cool. All right. So I'm at frame one. Make sure you have frame one. I'm going to keyframe everything so it starts like this. And I'm going to go in here and just hit the I key right there. Click the next one. Move mouse here. I key. I'm not clicking in there. I'm just hitting the I key when I have the mouse in there. Just hover inside the parameter. I key. Click the next one, hover in there, I key. All right. And if, you feel, if you're feeling confident, go ahead and add some other expressions in there. Maybe you want to frown or something, or maybe you want the ears to move around. Just create all, just create shape keys for all the other expressions. It's all in your imagination. The power is yours, Captain Planet. Anybody remember Captain Planet? All right, so I'm going to go to frame 50, and I'm going to keyframe up there. I'm going to keyframe them there. I'm going to keyframe uh, at frame 50 as well. All right, let's keep the smile and browse up default positions for two seconds. All right, so uh, let's see. Am I skipping any steps? So let's see. All right, so at frame 50, I'm going to keyframe the smile and browse up. Click there. Keyframe it here. Oh, frame 50. There it is. I key right here and browse up. I key right there. All right. And then I think I go over to frame 100. All right, so frame 100, I'm gonna have the brows up and a big smile. So I'm gonna go to frame 100. There we go. And brows up right here. Increase it all the way to one. Keyframe that I key. And then smile. Increase that all the way to one. I key. There we go. All right. So from frame one to 50, nothing's happening. And then from 50 to 100, we start a smile. So let me go over here to frame one. This will take you to the first frame. And then play button right there. Nothing, and then bam. Hey. All right, and it'll stay like that until the end, until it loops again. So we're gonna add more uh, keyframes in here to create more expressions. All right, so now we're gonna go over here to frame 120. Let me double check that, 120. And let's give the smile and browse up shape keys uh, less than a second to return to the default poses. All right, so it's 24 frames per second. So, um, so uh, one second will be at 24. We're going to stop right here at 120, and we're going to bring it back down to zero here. Smile and browse up. Zero, keyframe that. I key, browse up. Go all the way down to zero, and keyframe that. You can also click there. And there it is. I move the timeline cursor here to double check. I'm just holding down the left mouse button on the blue square there and dragging it left and right. So we're smiling, and then we're back. All right, so now we're going to go over to, let's see... Let's make the monkey look surprised by changing the brows up and gas mouth uh, shape keys. But first, we have to keyframe the gas mouth uh, to hold this position. All right. So I'm going to keyframe uh, brows up again. Oh, it's already keyframed, right? That is back to the default pose. So I just got to keyframe uh, gasp right here, the gasp. Because if I don't keyframe gasp right now, it's going to start to open the mouth all at frame one. And then whatever the next keyframe is where it's open. It'll open there, which is frame 120. Uh, actually, it's going to be frame 150. 
So I'm going to keyframe it here at 120 with the at zero. So the nothing's happening. And then after 120, it'll start to open the mouth here at 150. Let me double check 150. No, 120. I'm confusing myself here. <clears throat> All right, now let's execute the surprise look. Go to frame 150. Yes, 150. Cool. All right, and then at 150 with the gas mouse selected there, I'll bring it up. There it is. And keyframe that. This went from 120. There it is. From 1 to 120, nothing's happening on the gasp. And then after 120, it'll start to gasp. There we go. All right, and then we're also going to bring the brows up. So at 120, the brows are default. And then at 120, we're going to bring them back up again. Brows up, all the way up, keyframe that. There it is. Let's see. Smile, down, brows up, and gasp. Cool. All right. Now we're going to go to 170. And uh, back to default poses. So bring those all back down to zero. So 170. There we go. So here's 170. You can also just type it in here. This is current frame. 170. And these are going back down to zero. I key. And this one also going back down to zero. Oh, wrong one. This one down here. Bring it down to zero. I key. All right. There it is. There it is. All right. I'm going to 180. Let's animate the eyebrows to go up and down. So I'm going to have them start going up and down. So 180, and I'm probably gonna have them go up right now. Let's see. Go to frame 180, change value parameter to one on browse up. All right, 180, select browse up, and we're going up. Bam, keyframe that. There it is. And then hover the mouse inside the value parameter, the I key, and then keyframe uh, browse down. Nothing's going on with browse down. Browse down is at zero. You can see right here, one and zero at 180. And keyframe that as well. There it is. Now we're going to go over to 190. So 10 frames later. So we'll go pretty fast. And we're just going to switch these around. So browse up, it's going to go up to one now. Sorry, browse down, it's going to go up to one. I key or diamond. And browse up, it's going to go down to zero. And keyframe that. So notice uh, you got a better execution once I brought those down. Because you can actually combine the, um, the shape keys. You can have multiple shape keys at one, even for the same. Uh, the same affected area. There it is, up and down. Now uh, we can keep keyframing using this method here every 10 frames, but that's going to take a while. So why not just copy them? Let's just copy them. Go right here to frame 200. Right now, all these keyframes are selected. I know because it has yellow. When you select something in Blender, it has this yellow outline or a yellow color. So just click out of there. Right in the timeline, just click in here somewhere. See, now they turn white because now they're deselected. I'm going to select these right here, 180 and 190. I can actually zoom in right here by spinning the wheel. And then out here, you get a little scroll bar, so you can move it over. And I'm going to select these two here. I'm just going to drag select those there. There it is. And I'm going to copy them and paste them at 200. Wherever my timeline cursor is at, that's where my keyframes are going to get pasted. And I want to paste them right here at 200 because that's 10 frames later. All right, to copy them, just have your mouse down here. Make sure it's down here, not in the 3D viewport or somewhere else. Make sure it's down here because I want to copy for something down here. Hit Control C for copy. And then make sure your timeline cursor is at 200 after you select those two. Control V paste and it'll paste them over. There it is. Cool. So that one's down. I mean, sorry, that one's up. 180 is up. And then 190 and 210 are down. There it is. And then over for 220 over here, I'm going to drag select all these four. And then when I paste them, that'll go all the way to 50. So I got four of these. So it's going to be one. Two, three, four. All right. Control C to copy again. I'm at uh, frame 220. Control V to paste. There it is. Bam. All right. And it's just play that you got the animation. You can play it from anywhere. Let me zoom out from here. There was nothing happening for the first 50 frames, first two seconds. Whoa. There it is. And if you like, you can go and add, add additional animations for like uh, other mouth movements. So instead of just the eyebrows going up and down, you can also change the mouth to go up and down. See the little gas went up at the same time the eyebrows went up. That was cool. All right, so now we're going to bring in an HDRI file. We're going to bring it in. It's going to be like this 360 background picture. We're going to use it for lighting because it also provides lighting information. Let me hit the Z key, go to render, see what it looks like. There it is. We're in the dark. See, there are lights back there. Can't really see the monkey's face. So something's going in there, but it's uh, very, very shadowy there, very uh, noir. All right, so let's go over here to uh, polyhaven.com, formerly known as HGRI Haven. Let's see here. 
hdrihaven.com. Oh, I just should have just typed in polyhaven.com. Uh, there's a link in the description here for the book, and there will also be a link in the description for polyhaven.com. I love this website. Free to use. It's like three dudes from Europe, and they just go around and collect this data for us. Eat your eyes, and then just choose whatever you like. Remember that this sub is going to reflect off the monkey head because we are going to uh, create a reflective material for the monkey, and we're just going to use this here for lighting information. We'll make it invisible later. We just want the lighting information. So whatever looks good for you guys, go ahead and take that. Now this sunset one here looks kind of cool. I'm going to go with this one. It looks kind of dark, but I can, I can actually brighten it up. I can bring up the brightness. All right, so I clicked on it, and then up here, you can choose different qualities of that file. 4K is fine. 8 and 16, those are just overkill. You don't got to have to use those. We're not going for realism. It's a cartoon. It's an animation. So 4K is fine. Make sure it's HDRI, not EXR. Make sure it's HDRI. If it says EXR, click in there, and TV gives you the HDR version. And then click Download. Bam. Just wait for it to download. There it goes. Back over here to Blender. Hit the Z key, select render so you can get a preview of the final product. And then over here on the properties panel, click on the red earth right here. There it is. And then uh, this will give the properties here for our background. See that color right there, that gray color? That's the gray color there in the background. I can make it something else. But then that color reflects off the monkey head. See, it's hot in here. But instead, I want the lighting information and the color information from the HDRI file. So I'm going to click on this yellow socket right here. I'm going to go to environment texture for my own little environment here, my little world. And then I'm going to click on open. That pink color is telling me it's missing data. So I'm going to go to here, open. And then that's over in downloads, downloads. And that's right over here. Big holo -lo -lo. I don't know how to pronounce that. Open image. Weird name for a file. There it is. So it's not too, uh, too bright. If it's not too bright, you want it brighter. Check this out. Strength right here. You can just increase it and make it a little brighter. See? Now it's daytime. There was a sunset, or now it's a sunrise. Five might be too much. Let me try two. That looks cool. I've got the stars in there. Beautiful. All right. I think next we um, we make the material. Let me double check. All right. All right. We're going to make uh, the transparent background and make the uh, material here for the monkey head. All right. So there's my monkey head selected. Properties panel. I'll click on the red marble down here. There it is. Then click on new. And then in here, just give it a name, descriptive name. I'll call it metal. Metal. Metal's reflective. Or polished metal. Base color, you can go with the gray color. Or a bluish color, red color, whatever color you want to go with. All the red color is kind of cool here. It's burgundy ish color. All right, I'm going to scroll down. Then to make it reflective, I'm going to increase metallic all the way to one. And then roughness all the way down to zero. There it goes. All right, still doesn't look very reflective. Uh, that's because uh, we need something else. We need to activate something else. We need to activate one of our render aids. So up here, click on the on the icon that looks like the back of a DSLR camera. Click on the render tab. It's called render. There it is. Activate ambient occlusion. That'll give us some better bounce light. So when light hits the surface of something, it bounces off and uh, keeps bouncing. So activate that. And then activate bloom. Give us a little bit of a glow effect. The uh, the glow that you see on like a neon sign. That yeah, actually worked better on the outside, on the background there. And screen space reflections. This is for reflections. Screen space reflections. All right. And now motion blur. And that'll, uh, once we animate it, it'll give us a blur effect when things move kind of fast. All right. So it's still kind of dark, I guess, because the light is in the back over there. See, it's using the light information from the HR file and the lights back there. So I'm just going to move the blender light forward. GY, give us some better lighting there. Except for top view, G for gram, one for front view, GZ, and we'll give it some light here. Uh, it's still not bright enough. You see that shiny thing right there? That one? That's the blender light right there. It's actually not looking pretty cool now. Not looking cool. All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to go over here. Lamp data. have the light selected. Increase the power. Let's see if I make it brighter. Let's make it brighter. Still not much brighter. I can um, rotate the HRI file, give me a better look. But that's a whole other lesson there. So let me try changing the color and make it a little brighter. That usually works. There it goes. There it is. So now you can see a little better. Uh, as you can see here, the monkey head is very pixelated. So what you can do is right click it. So like shade smooth. It'll smooth it out. See, there it is. Cool. Can I see stars there on the surface? Yeah, look, you can see the stars. Is that dust? <laughs> All right, there we go. Cool. That looks pretty cool now. All right. And uh, make a little lighter here. 
There it is. All right, so that worked as well. All right, I think next we're going to do the transfer and background or delete the light. If the uh, lighting information from your HRF file is good enough, you can delete your light by clicking on it and then hitting the X key or delete to delete it. If you can't find it because all the uh, stuff there in the HRF file, you can get over here in the outliner, click on light, and then delete it. All right, shade smooth there. And over to render tab, back over here to render tab. So I already activated uh, these render aids here to improve my render. Now I want to get a transfer of background. I just want the monkey head here and have those reflections on there. See, you got the trees there. Cool. Looking good. All right. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to open film. Open film. And activate transparent right there. Cool. So you get that checkered pattern there. Just like you see in a transparent image, a transparent PNG file. Same thing. And if you render this out, it will actually have a, um, a transparent background. And you can overlay it some, on something else. And there it is, seeing it has a reflection still from the HRI file. You still see the stars there, those trees. There's that sunset in the background. Awesome, I like this. Cool. All right, and just gotta adjust the camera here. So whatever looks like a good view, you can see it from the front or from the side, whatever you guys like. This looks cool here to me. To make whatever your user view is, just hold down Control, Alternate, and zero on the number pad, and it'll make that the new camera view. Control alternate zero. Boom, that's my new camera view. Got the whole monkey head in there. Uh, if you don't like the angle or the uh, view here of the camera, you can still uh, select it here from camera frame and move it around. Uh, if you go up here up top, you can see there's a link here to another video that shows you how to control the camera. So uh, you guys can look at that as well. So uh, get some better uh, camera management tools there. All right, so I'm going to save the external data before I save this file. Because I brought an HRI file, that's external data. If I save this Blender file and then move the original location, put it in a different folder or on a flash drive, send it to somebody else and they open it, they're not going to get the HRI file information. It's just going to be this bright pink surface reflecting off of there. So to store the HRI file with the Blender file, go to File up here. Go down External Data and then Activate Automatic Packet to Blend by clicking on that box right there. And it adds a check mark. You go back here, double check. There it is. There's a check mark there. That's letting me know that any external data like the HRI file or images I bring in here will be stored with my Blender file once I go to File, Save As right here. Desktop for now. Let's see red, monkey, shape keys. There it is. All right. Render animation. Now I'm going to render this out as an MP4. MP4, this way you can upload it to almost any platform. MP4 is the most commonly used a file, video file in the world. So we're going to go here to the output tab, which is the one that looks like a printer. And we're here, file format, uh, AVI JPEGs, cool video file. But we're going to go with MP4 right here. Click on FFmpeg video. And it's still not an MP4. Right now, it's actually by default, it's a Matroska file. What that is, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to go here and coding, open encoding. Right here, Matro container Matroska, change the container type to MPEG4. And now it's an MP4. Now it will, it will be an MP4. All right, and then just click on the folder here so you can tell it where to save it to and give it a name desktop. And I'm also going to call it Red Monkey. Red Monkey Emotions. Emotions, there it is. All right, that's all cool, except. And then Control F12 to render the animation. Wait patiently, and soon we will have a, a render here of our monkey head. I just spun the wheel to zoom out so I can see the rest of it there. All right. And there it is. Cool. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Uh, like I mentioned before, you can uh, buy the hand app over at uh, Amazon. Uh, if you want to support the channel so you can get more content like this, not just from me, but from other Blender YouTubers out there, you can uh, like, subscribe, or comment, leave a review. Or sorry, comment, leave a comment here in the video. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.